Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today, well, goodness, that looks like that's all smudged, but that's the way my camera's making that look. Today's Daily Recap is for Thursday, October the 6th, 2022. Thursday, October the 6th, 2022. Well, some happenings on General Hospital today. We got the old Brooklyn back. The funny thing is, um, when I heard someone make comments, a couple people made comments that the old Brooklyn was coming back, but they said um, this is more intermediate, um, temporarily. They said the part, part of Brooklyn Quartermain is temporarily being played by this actress name. And I thought, oh, I remember her being Brooklyn. Oh, my goodness. But it was actually nice to see her again. So Chase does his performance. He does a good job. Actually, he did an excellent job. You know, I was like, okay, go ahead, Chase. Um, we have Yuri and Terry and Elizabeth and Finn on a double date. It was too cute. I like Yuri and Terry together. They seem really, really happy. Yuri is really happy with her and she's really happy with him. So I was happy to see that. Um, and then uh, part of it, you know, the happenings in the club, we got Maxie showing up trying to convince Cody to do the DNA test. And uh, yuck. Cody to me was trying to weasel out of Miss Wu, uh, you know, him working for her. And she's like, you're not trying to get out of our arrangement, are you? And he's like, well, you know, it doesn't seem like you need me. To the contrary. <laughs> she was like, you think he beat you up in the alley last time? You haven't seen the half of what he can do. And Cody's like, well, okay. So, you know, he goes and he's listening to Chase, you know, standing next to Maxie. I can already tell you right now, nosy Maxie is going to stumble upon something she shouldn't, okay? Because she notices Miss Wu standing, you know, in the back there looking at Cody saying, hey, it's time, let's go. And because Cody kind of steps away from Maxie and when she turns, she sees him going to the back with Miss Wu. So curiosity is going to get the better of her. Mm. Hate to see that coming because Selena don't play and you're not going to mess up her money from her card game. And then we have um, Portia and Trina. Before the club, Portia meets her at uh, Kelly's and Trina had all, you know, I don't get this whole squealing thing Portia does now. She opened the door and squealed at the, oh my God, Portia, what is up with that? You could have scared everybody in, in Kelly's doing that. So Trina had attitude, you know, talking about how adult I am acting like a two-year-old, reminding her mother of how adult she is, right? So her mother's like, ooh, I'll order us some milkshakes. See, there you go again. Treat me like an adult. Milk and so Portia's like, oh, okay, well, well, look, I'll just get a milkshake for me. And so Trina's like, okay, get one for me too. <laughs> you know. So they had a good talk, and Portia reminded her, and I had forgotten about that. Don't forget, Trina, it was Curtis that saved us from Cyrus Renault. And actually, Trina, even though she blamed him for this when Taggart got shot, it was Curtis that pulled her out of there, gun bullets ablazing. Yeah, Curtis. It, like, and then she reminded him how Curtis and Marshall and TJ, it was really Curtis and Marshall that found uh, um, Oz pulling in some favors. So just because you're mad that he wanted to keep you safe, you need to rethink that attitude, you know? And so Trina, she does, you know, calm down because she's not a rude, rude. Well, she can be very rude. I take that back. She was rude to Curtis back when she thought her father was dead. But she comes to the club with her mother and Curtis apologizes for overstepping 
And she says, no, you know, she overreacted and, you know, but look, remember, I'm an adult. And like duly noted, you know, yeah, you're an adult, Trina, you're an adult. So um, that, that was really, really good. And oh, it's almost like, oh my goodness, if I didn't know they shoot these shows two months in advance, right? I would be like, are the writers listening to me? I was just saying, where is Roxy? Does Finn still have Roxy? And guess what Finn was talking about today with Yuri? Yuri has a, a, a dragon, but it's a different kind of bearded dragon. But they both have bearded dragons and they bonded over the bearded dragon. Um, Yuri said the name of his dragon and Finn said the name of his dragon, Roxy. And I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. So Roxy is still alive. I wonder how long the bearded dragons live. Because sometimes reptiles don't necessarily live that long. But you know, that's off topic. That's really off topic. So um, that was great. That was, that was really, really cute. Now something else that happened, and this is where Brooklyn going to shoot herself in the foot. Dante said that Jordan was getting ready to pull some strings, which she should have always been able to do with that citizen uh, review board, right? Um, so he said, he said, um, and it's looking like Chase is going to be able to get his license reinstated or get reinstated. He doesn't have a like, get it reinstated back with the, the force. And Brooke is like, oh, okay, that'll give us some time. Because in a couple of months, you know, we, he goes, a couple of months? Well, this will happen in a couple of weeks. And she looked like, well, that doesn't give us enough time. See, there she goes. There she goes. It's all about Brooklyn. All about her. She knows the one thing Chase wants the most is to get, you know, be reinstated. And she's going to try to circumvent that. I tell you, I she's going to do something. She's going to try to either hide, you tell Dante, don't tell him. And, but Dante's going to tell him anyway. There's no way Dante wouldn't tell him. Because he goes, even after Chase performed well, she goes, you know what? You do have an eye for uh, spotting talent. But just as talented he was up there on the stage, that's as talented. He's even more talented, a detective. And I can't wait to get my partner back. And Brooklyn is just, just looking. Wow. So we have Oz with Jordan and Robert. And he was talking about, okay, they're ready to sign his, his plea bargain deal. They were giving him immunity. Well, they were actually trying to backtrack a little bit on it. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to talk about how I conveniently came out of a, a medically induced coma just in time enough to help. And George is just looking like, mm, yeah, coincident, <laughs> you know, and he broke stuff down and let him know, no, this is how it's going to go. And I'm getting a better day. And he goes, I graduated top of my class in law school. And I thought, oh, really, you, you graduated top of your class at law school. Okay, look, I was just saying, who are the attorneys left in, in Port Charles? No, not Oz, okay, <laughs> goodness. So they do, they end up giving him a better deal and he signs it and he's peace out of there. He's happy and I said, look, we were wondering where was Oz, but I guess he was still kind of recuperating. I don't know where they said he was. Was he recuperating or or what was happening? Or it just took that long for the deal to be, you know, cemented possibly, right? So now down to the good stuff. The good stuff is Esme is in there with Daddy Dearest, right? And Daddy Dearest, you know what? I'm looking, I don't have one of my slides here, but we'll we'll just go with this one. Daddy Dearest grabbed her because he, you know, he told her, if you hurt my Ava, 
I know this thing, this this hook person is you. I know it's you. And you can't wait to, you know, take credit for it. And this, that, and the other. You deviating from the plan. And, and so she goes, it wasn't me. And he goes, I know it was you. I know it was you. And so she took his hand and took her hand away. And he's like, well, my, my. Uh, something, something has changed in you, my, my, right? And so she tells him, look, I, she actually, I don't know, she hinted to, she goes, Brando Corbin was just uh, at the, uh, I had, I don't even know him, you know, he, he wouldn't be involved. And I'm thinking, okay, you're giving yourself away, girl. So, <laughs> Um, Ryan told her, you're not going to touch Ava. Just understand this. And she let him know, I do have other things to do, but Ava is on my list. And he just looked at her, right? So he says, you deviated from the plan, you this, you that. And she goes, there's a new plan. I've got a new plan. I've got a better plan. And he's like, okay. And what is it? So she's like, well, it's good. You sitting down. So she sits down and she tells him the plan. Of course, we don't get to hear what she's, what ace she's got up her sleeve. We don't get to hear the plan. But when the scene comes back to her, Ryan is like, okay, now that's a plan. <laughs> you know, that's a plan. That's a plan. That woo, we can, you know, get us everything. She's like, it'll get us everything we want. And he's like, okay, yeah, all right. I'm with it. I'm all for it. And so she she's like, but well, look, I need some some money. I I don't have a place to stay. And he's like, Well, can you get your a hold of your trust fund? And she's like, Yeah, but it's being watched. If I withdraw any money, it's gonna lead back to me. And he says, well, look, I put, while I was uh, pretending to be my, be my brother, I put a sizable amount of money aside, but you would have to get by, somehow, you know, get by Kevin's, the fact that Kevin it will be needed because he was Kevin when he did this. And so she goes, you know, I'll, I'll work on that, you know. Um, so then she's like, well, he goes, you're resourceful. It's funny. He goes, you're resourceful. You've gotten by this long. You'll be fine until, until you get it. And she goes, looks at him. Uh -uh. Thanks. You know? And she says, well, you know what? Right now, I have a little matter to take care of right now. So I thought, okay, what is she up to, right? What is she up to? Now, I'm watching her and I'm looking at that coat and I'm thinking, yep, Esme is pregnant. A hundred percent she's pregnant. And that's the bombshell. Now, there can't really be a Cassidyne alive with the exception of Victor that's going to get her off of all the things that she's done. And even I don't think that he can for him, he can't possibly for the attempted murder of Oz for drugging I mean she's got too many charges for them to get her off but it's good but she's got some aces up her sleeve see now she's hearing information because Trina and Ava and Jocelyn all talking out in the open so she's probably going to try to blackmail Sonny although that is a dangerous thing because see he would kill her before he let her talk Ooh, say what you want girl you know so Anyway, she's going out to wreak, allegedly wreak some havoc, right? But one thing I noticed, I said, okay, Ryan's doing all this grabbing. She's doing all this jerking away. She's doing all this talking. I didn't hear any clang, clang, clanging of anything. I didn't hear any jewelry. Did you? Did anybody hear any jewelry? None, right? So at the end, Oz is walking on pier, the pier. 
and he hears this clanging sound. And in my mind, I'm like, goodness, that sounds more like chains almost. That really doesn't sound like bracelets to me. It's too loud to sound like bracelets. Simple jewelry, you know? So he's bragging on the phone. He's asking, hey, look, I got cleared. When can I start come back to work at the bar? But I'm going to do it part-time because I'm going, I'm entering um, he's getting ready. He's going to study for the bar so he can become a lawyer. He goes, cause I'm going to be a good lawyer. So he hangs up and he hears the clanking. He hears the clanking of the chains. And I thought, uh Oh yeah, he's expendable, right? <laughs> he is completely expendable. So we've got the hook or er, and I, I, I started looking at that and I said, wait a minute. So I'm rewinding the scene. Okay, this is this is the hooker that kills Oz. This is not the pants or the jacket that Esme was wearing. That's what's interesting to me. Her jacket was definitely at her knee. And that type of jacket, it kind of flared out a bit, right? And even right now, if she puts her hands down, because she's moving a chair, if she puts her hands straight down, it's going to come right about here. This jacket that the, the, the hooker has on is more of a straight jacket. And his knees or, the, or her knees or whoever, because Diane said it was a woman, their knees are down here as they're walking and it's bending. You just can't see the bend in the picture, but the knees down here. So the jacket is up much higher because if Esme stood up straight, she's kind of bent over. So the back of the jacket is up higher, but the front of the jacket is almost knee length. Plus she's wearing pants that are more like leggings. They're not completely as tight as leggings, but they're more like leggings. These are trouser pants. These are pants, pants. And I thought, huh, either she decided she was going to go change or gosh darn it, some of you might have been right that it really isn't Esme. <laughs> it's a woman and do not say no. It's not going to be now. <laughs> it's, it's somebody that we haven't thought about. For all those that thought it was Elizabeth, it's not Elizabeth. She's out on a double date. There's somebody that I just don't know who it could be. I'm wrecking my brains. General Hospital is really really got us going right now. They're really pulling a fast one because they really want us to think, okay, look, there was nail in black and yeah, yeah, but that's not the same coat. And you never heard any clanking, although maybe whatever the clanking sound is, no, it's not in connection to hitting the hook at all because when their hand is up swinging it, it I don't know. I, I don't know what the clanking is going to be but it looks as if Oz is going to bite it, right? Because I, uh, Dex is not going to be running around the corner with Oz. So who's going to be coming up on the pier to save him? Wow. You know? So that was interesting. That was very, very interesting to me. We got some something going on. I would really like your thoughts on it. Now we're going to go to comment corner, comment corner. Uh, there are a lot of comments. Of, let's see. Susan York, Susan gave uh, great comments, but they were on today's show and the comments are on yesterday's show. So I'm going to stick with the comments that are on yesterday's show. Um, uh, but your comments were great, Susan, and you did give a phenomenal, phenomenal recap of today's show. Uh, let's see. Well. Well, maybe I will touch on some of them because they were really good. Uh, well, you know, same thing I said, just in written form. Excellent job. Excellent job. Now we have Robin. This episode cleared Dex 
and Ryan. Also, Esme may have learned this from Ryan because Ava said that Ryan killed in the past with a hook. Okay, Esme is the only attacker for now. She caught Brando off guard. Uh, glad to see, wait, glad to know why Willow is not telling Michael about the cancer because he would want her to start the treatments. Well, Willow said that all along. And the thing is, the hooker didn't catch Brando as off guard as they caught the others. Because remember, Brando walked out there. Brando had time. It's raining really hard, though. But Brando had looking him straight in the face and had time to kind of square up. He just wasn't expecting that hook like that. Everybody else is turning and is gone. Brando didn't turn and gone. Brando's looking at him like, who are you? <laughs> you know? And he got it. And then uh, we got the comment, Esme is the killer. And I was all, all Team Esme was the killer, but now I don't know. The show might be throwing us a curve. Uh, they just showed the killer again, and it's not Esme. I'm with that. I know. I kind of think so, too. Esmeralda and Dex are somehow connected. Could they be? Maybe their uh, mummy was Holly Sutton. I don't know about that. Um, but... Esme does not know who her mother is. Uh, I don't know. She does not know. Dex, I think they may try to make it be a long lost son of Sonny's. And that's what someone else said in the comments. You know. Um, and then uh, Anna Rihanna says, both Michael and Joss have been under Sonny's protection all their life. Sonny isn't a secret to anyone in Port Charles. I love the look and just walked away. Jason was Sonny's best friend and the only person Sonny could truly trust. That is so, so true. Um, and then she was talking about um, there's something much more to Dex. We all believe that Esme, yeah, she can't do Esme superhuman in a black cloak, not like that. Um, it said Nina should be slapped. Yeah, she really should. She is hateful and manipulative. And she deserves all she gets. I completely believe that about her. Because even to Curtis, Carly hasn't been around in how long? What was out of her mouth? Because he goes, you are in your element running this hotel. Yeah, but Carly, you know, Carly makes sure I have a hard time. And Carly's friend. And I'm like, oh, shut up, Nina. Shut up. Um, and then uh, Juanita said, is Terry a transgender? Because I think somebody was saying, Christina and Terry would make a good match. No, Terry is transgender. She is a woman. She is a woman now. Um, Karen says, yes, she is. Yes, she's transgender. And I never, Terry Johnson, said, no, Juanita said, I would never have known Terry was transgender. I know she's really very pretty. Um, Karen says, yes, Elizabeth's friend was a male. Um, I knew, I can remember his name, but I can remember, what was his name? I'll remember his name, I think. Because she said, when when she came back, she said what, what her friend's male name was. But anyway, um, maybe it'll come back to me. If anybody remembers what was Terry's original name, uh, maybe it'll come back to me. And then Jane says, what about Don of Day, dude? Yeah, but he's, he's, he could, he's got a lot of women there yeah, that may want revenge. But when you look at who everybody's getting revenge on, uh, Christina would be one of the main ones they want revenge. And Sam would be if it's Don of Day, definitely. Um, and then Juanita says, that's why I say um, there isn't anybody that can take Sonny's place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I understand he was, oh, he wants to retire. Oh, what, um, Maurice Bernard. Uh, but it's going to, yeah, they're going to have to look long and hard to find another Sonny. They really are. Because when he came on, that was years and years ago. He was so young and he was not the mob boss at the time. I'm trying to think of the name of the mob, mob boss. Wasn't it Frank? What was the mob boss's name? 
Anybody remembers it? Because I don't know. Frank sounds a little too plain. Who Sonny took over the business for, from. And then Treasure Ivan says, um, Sonny didn't even apologize to Dex. At least Mike, uh, Michael really cares. It looks like Dex, Dex has a personal agenda. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Against Sonny. Um, prior to, to accepting Michael's job. And then Carly should take the Spencer name. It has a, a lineage of very headstrong women. I think she should be Carly Spencer too. Um, and then Hello There says, of course not, because that would mean he would have to admit to the public, uh, admit it in public and he'd go to jail about, you know, keeping Dex hostage. And <laughs> Ruth said, there's nothing wrong with how the howdy doody type. She likes Toy Story. We're talking about Cameron Mathis. Matheson. He is a good actor, but it's just the role they're having him play with Drew is just too goody. Too, I mean, it's, ah. I liked it better when he could be, you're activated. You are activated. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, that's just the way they're they're really writing it. Um, and then Ruth says, Nina should mind her own business. She, I know, she is, she's just a pain. She is a pain in the butt. Um, and she suspects Dex. Um, um, let's see here. He is miserable. Oh, Victor is miserable. Yeah, Victor Cassadine, he is miserable. And he he wants to control each and everything, and including the lives of his entire family. Um, Dex talked to open face, yeah. And then on all my what all my children want like to live. What we're talking about? Oh, how people love to talk in open places, personal stuff. You know, listen. Did you know that my social security number is? Oh, you know what? I'm on the phone. Yes, yes. I want to. I want to order for pickup. On oh, my credit card, okay. Blah 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 blah. Expiration date, da 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 da. Oh, CVC, blah. <laughs> you know, in public, just stay out there in public. Um, let's see. Goodness, actually, I'm almost done. Let me skim through these again. Yes, Nell and Ava sent Carly to Ferncliff. Oh yeah, over that baby blanket. Yeah, that was a long. Yeah, they try to make her crazy. Um, Tasha says, I was just checking on the comments to see if anybody's already said this. Um, uh, I was going to LOL that never, it never came out and Ava got away with that. Yeah, did, she did get away with being a part of that. Um, just like she got away with killing AJ, she sure did. And hitting Jason with the car. I don't remember Jason getting hit by the car. That, that was something that's a, a blast from the past. Michael's plans, and this is Ron said, Michael's plans will backfire and Sonny will be the one to save him. I know, Michael's going to get it. I mean, something's going to be coming to Michael. Um, but I'll throw this bone in and see where it lands. Esme's parents are Heather and Ryan. I know. That would be a doozy. Heather Weber double dose of crazy oh my goodness that's a double dose of crazy um and then uh jane says this is the best trying to figure it out meaning we're all going back and forth forth trying to throw stuff in and sandy says nina's conversation with Kurt curtis about carly um she doesn't think wait but she still needed to attack willow yes she saw Willow and TJ hugging, and of course her sick mind went to the gutter because that's exactly what Nina, Nina can't hug somebody unless, you know, she's trying something, right? Carly 2.0 is out of control, talking about Joss, um, about Dex. She's going to blow up when she finds out that Michael tells Dex to stay away from her. Yes, she is. Hello there, says Nina is ridiculous. She acts like she's nine years old, running around, playing tag. You're, you're on the playground. It says, I'm going to get you, Wiley. I know she is running around. Um, Eric, the weird 
oh, a weird sweet shriek she makes. Um, she must be in her 50s and supposed to be a grandmother. We're talking about, oh, the real smirks that she makes. Yeah, I know. Um, for example, she went out crying earlier this year about losing custody. Um, that, but that's another storyline. I'm glad it's finished. But yeah, I know. Nina, Nina. And then um, Jane says, Charlotte put a poisonous snake in Ava's purse at Violet's birthday party. LOL, Charlotte. Um, I went back and I watched that on YouTube. And I'm kind of thinking, remembering. For one, the snake was Charlotte's pet snake. Valentine would not let her have a pet poisonous snake. That's how he knew Charlotte did it because of the snake. It was her snake. And I think she ordered it. She had ordered it too. Um, and they tricked us. They made us believe or she thought she had put it inside of the pinata and it got out right? <laughs> so it kind of mixed up what, is, what was her intention because we were all on edge that, oh my goodness, this girl is going to, when people, the kids were pulling the piñata, the little strings that the snake was going to come out. And then she was actually struck because she was nervous every single time somebody pulled a string. She didn't even want to pull one herself. And then the snake ends up coming out of Ava's purse. That was that was so funny. That was really, really funny. Uh, but thank you so much for all of the comments on Comment Corner. Thank you. And I, Lulu helped Charlotte because Charlotte was on a real dark path. I mean, Charlotte was a female Cassidine to be reckoned with. And you know what? She still might be because guess what? She's being sent away with no real guidance. And Charlotte's inclinations are to do really, really bad things. I mean, look at how she bullied and tormented little Aiden. Oh my goodness, Charlotte was something else. But Lulu kept on her, kept on her, kept working with her. Lulu really, really did. So I will be back tomorrow, everybody. Let's see what Cliff Hanger Friday is going to be on General Hospital.